In this chapter, we're going to go through the uh, use of the plant tool itself. From selecting plant definitions to how each of the different insertion modes of the plant tool work. So to get to a file like this, where we have various different plants placed, different species, using various different modes of the plant tool itself, before we can get to this level, we first need to understand some of the basics of the, the plant tool itself, its modes, and then go into what an actual plant is here in Vectorworks. So we're not going to start here with this full file. What we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this smaller planting bed over here uh, on the bottom right. And actually, we're going to kind of peel all this away. We're going to start with just a basic planting bed, and we're going to go through some of the different modes and see how they how they interact and how they change so we can see, see how to create a similar bed. So to begin here, we've now got an empty bed. Uh, we're going to go ahead and activate our plant tool. The plant tool itself is located uh, in the site planning tool set that's in the bottom left of your screen. And then once you activate the plant tool itself, uh, you'll notice up here in the toolbar. In the toolbar, it's at the top of your, uh, your drawing area, and most of the tool modes end up being to the top left. Uh, so if you take a le look at here, you'll see different buttons. Each of these buttons is a different mode or a different setting for this particular tool. And uh, one of the first things we want to do is we want to we want to choose a plant definition before we do anything else. We need to tell Vectorworks what type of plant we want to we want to place. Uh, and to do this, we use this resource selector here in the toolbar, uh, and this lets us navigate uh, predefined plant definitions. Now, if you're not familiar with the resource selector or the resource manager, I would take a minute, uh, pause the video here, go ahead and take a look at our chapters on the resource manager to kind of give you the, the basics of how the resource manager itself works. Now, the first thing you're going to notice is on the left here, uh, we have a, a, a file list and uh, there's a section uh, called Vectorworks Libraries. Now, under Vectorworks Libraries, uh, there are going to be various predefined plant definitions that you can choose from. Now, these are going to range from simple black and white uh, representations to color, as well as uh, non-species and then also species-specific plant definitions. There's a wide variety of options here built in by default. However, if you don't find one uh, particular plant that you're looking for, you can also create your own plant definitions. Uh, now we're going to go into creating plant definitions in a later chapter. Uh, for now, we're going to focus on using some of the predefined definitions that we have here in Vectorworks. Now, using the file list on the left, uh, we can navigate through not only those Vectorworks libraries, but we can also navigate to any plant definitions that we may have in, in our open files or favorites, for instance. Uh, now we're going to use some predefined ones we've created for, for this particular project. So they're going to be in our active document. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And then we're going to select one of our plants here. Now to select a plant through the resource selector, you can do this in a couple different ways. You can select it, just highlight it, and then click the select button in the bottom right. Uh, or alternatively, you can just double click on it. Before we do that, I want to take a look at a couple of the other things you see here in the resource selector. Uh, one thing you'll notice once I've selected one of these, I've highlighted them in the uh, list. On the right, there's going to be a larger preview, and then uh, below that, you're going to see uh, data about the uh, the object. Now, on the preview, it's currently showing a, a top plan or a 2D representation of this. You can switch this to 3D uh, 3D view to take a look at the 3D representation if you need to. Below that, the data pane, that's going to have various information about this plant. So uh, it's going to have height, spread, spacing, uh, and other information uh, related to the particular plant that's coming from the definition itself. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll, we'll activate this one. So I'm just going to double click on the plant. And you'll notice two things here. One, the uh, the plant name that I clicked on uh, that's now showing in my toolbar in the resource selector. Uh, and then if I move my cursor into the drawing area, we're going to see a little preview of the uh, plant itself. Uh, now, this is just an outline of it for now. It's just to give us a representation or, or an idea of where this plant's going to be placed and its general size. So now that we've got a plant selected, let's take a closer look at uh, the different modes we have here. So there, there's three main modes uh, for the plant tool. These first three modes um, are going to control uh, how the, the, the rest of the settings are applied. Uh, so the first mode is just insertion mode. So insertion mode is, is literally that. It just places a plant. Uh, and it's, it, it does use some additional modes. We're going to get into that in a second. The next mode moving to the right is the pickup mode. 
And then uh, next to that, we have the mass creation mode. Now, the pickup and the uh, mass creation mode are a little bit different. We're going to, they kind of, in some cases, work together. Um, we'll talk about those in, the, in a little bit more detail in a moment. But the pickup mode itself pulls settings from already placed plants and then applies them to the plant tool. Uh, so if you had a particular type of setting, a particular plant chosen, it will pull that, that information and apply it to the plant tool. So you can essentially place another one. Uh, and then the mass creation mode, what this does is it, it converts an object into, you know, a plant or multiple plants, depending on the, uh, the chosen mode. And what, like I said, we'll get into these in a moment. But first, let's take a closer look at the first mode. So again, the first mode is the insertion mode. So what's interesting about the uh, first mode here of the plant tool, the insertion mode, is that it actually uses, in addition to just the insertion mode, there's five main placement modes uh, over here on the right that uh, it uses as well. So the first placement mode we see here is just single plant placement mode. Uh, this is exactly what it sounds like. It places a single instance of a plant. So it just places one plant at a time and everywhere you click, it's going to place another instance of that particular plant. So as you can see here, I'm clicking around our planting bed uh, and we're just getting individual instances of this particular plant. So now we have a, an, a couple instances of this plant here in our file. If we wanted to adjust its settings, we can do that directly through our object info palette. Remember, first place you're going to go to, to, to change or modify a plant is our object info palette. So de definitely check out the object info palette if you want to make changes. Uh, we will go into all the plant settings in a later chapter, uh, but that is the first place you're going to go if you do want to make some changes. Let's go ahead and take a look at the, uh, the other four placement modes. Now, these modes are, are similar in the fact that they place multiple plants and they place them into a group or the group together um, into to specific plant groupings. And there's some benefits to this. We'll take a look at it in a moment. And now let's take a look at the, the first of those group modes. Uh, that's the poly vertex placement mode. Uh, and what this does is, again, it, it places more than one plant, but essentially everywhere I click. So every time I click, it's going to place a single plant in that location. But before we go ahead and start placing some of these, let's change our plant. Let's choose a different plant from uh, our file here. And we're, again, we're going to use the resource selector in our toolbar. So as you can see here, as I click, it's placing a new plant every single time I click. When I'm ready to complete, we just go ahead and double click and that ends the operation. So let's go ahead and take a look at the next one. This is the poly edge spaced mode. Again, let's choose a different plant from our list here. And then we're going to go in and we're going to use this mode. Now the poly edge spaced mode places, again, more than one plant at a time, but it places them along a path. So essentially think of this as drawing a path or a line or a poly uh, that you want plants to be placed along. Uh, now what's different about this is it doesn't matter how many times I click, it's going to place a certain number of, of plants along this line that I'm drawing. The number and the spacing is going to be based off of uh, the spacing settings found in the, either the plant definition or the custom spacing setting that I may have chose. So next up, we've got a, uh, the, one of our two array modes. So we have our, our rectangular array mode and then we have our triangular array mode. Now, these are a little bit similar in that what you're doing is you're now defining a boundary uh, for the, uh, the plants, and then the plants will fill that area. Uh, I'm going to do these off to the side here just to show you what they look like. Uh, so here's a rectangular array. And again, we're just, you know, individual clicks are just defining the different, you know, segments of that, that boundary. And then we can double click uh, to end or just click once at our start point again to end. And this works the same way with a triangular array. The only difference is the pattern at which the plants are placed within that boundary. Now, a major benefit of, of using these grouped modes, these plant grouped modes, is that each of these groups get placed with a single tag associated with the plant group instead of having an individual tag per plant. Uh, so this can be beneficial, especially if placing a large number of plants. You don't necessarily want, you know, dozens of individual tags. You might just want a single one. Uh, we'll talk about the tag settings and grouping settings in later chapters, but I did just want to let you know that's one of the main benefits of doing these grouped plants. In addition to the, uh, the five main placement modes that we just took a look at, uh, there's also a, an additional hedge mode. Now, this mode enables the hedge creation, and it uses either the poly edge spaced, rectangular array, or triangular array modes. Uh, it will not work with a single placement mode, um, so you do want to keep that in mind. It only works with the, those three modes I mentioned. 
Now, what this does is it creates a, a hedgerow along the path that's drawn. Now, this is going to be most commonly used with the poly edge spaced mode. You can use it with the rectangular and triangular array modes. But you can sometimes get, depending on the size of the, the boundary, you might get overlapping plants. Uh, so do keep that in mind. But what this will do is it's going to create a certain number of hedgerows. So instead of creating just a single, you know, a single edge or a single uh, line of plants along the, the, the edge, it's going to create X number, essentially, of, of hedgerows. Now, the number of hedgerows is defined in the uh, plant tool settings or in the plant definition itself. So that's something to keep in mind if you want to place like three, he you know, three rows in the hedge. Uh, you can go ahead and define that in the settings, which we're going to come and take a look at here in a moment. Now, after we've used these hedge modes and the, the other placement modes, uh, the, what I want to do is kind of come back and take a look at the two other main modes we have for the plant tool. So uh, instead of using the, uh, the insertion mode, I mentioned we had that pickup mode and then that mass creation mode. Now, the pickup mode, as you, as you remember, basically pulls settings from placed plants. So now that we already have some plants placed, maybe I want to create something similar to this in another area, but I don't remember the exact modes or maybe the exact species that I chose. Using the pickup mode, I can just activate that mode, click once on a placed plant, uh, and it'll pull that information and apply that to the plant tool. So after I click on it, you'll notice my plant changed in the, uh, the resource selector in the toolbar. Also, my modes changed as well. And now I'm ready to go ahead and just place that using the exact same settings. Now, the final insertion mode that we have here is the massing creation mode. Uh, now, what this will do is it's going to convert any poly-like object into plants. So one way to kind of think of this is if you drew a boundary or an area and you wanted to fill that with plants, you could use this mass creation mode for that. Did I kind of give you a better idea how this works? I'm going to kind of take us off to the side here. And what I have here is I have five rectangles. These are all the exact same width and height, so identical rectangles. And what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to use this massing creation mode on each one of these rectangles using the, the different modes we have. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the, uh, the single plant placement mode. With this mode enabled, if I then click on one of these rectangles, you'll see that it just creates a single plant at the upper left vertice of the rectangle. Uh, so essentially, this is just creating one plant and it's going to the first vertice in the shape, no matter what that shape is. Now, if we move on, if we enable the, the poly vertex mode, and if you remember the poly vertex placement mode, that is going to place a plant at every vertex of the object. So if we click on a rectangle here, you're going to get four plants. So we get one at each vertex. Now, if we go down to the poly edge spaced mode, remember this is going to create plants along an edge or along a line. If we click on this rectangle, instead of getting one at every corner, we now get plants spaced along the edges of the rectangle. And again, this is uh, the, the spacing is based off the spacing setting in the plant tool settings or the, from the plant definition. Then if we use the rectangular array or the triangular array on these two, you'll see the rectangular array gives us a rectangular fill. Uh, and then the, uh, the triangular array fills that boundary with a, with a triangular array of our, uh, of our plant. So this mode can be very useful if you're essentially doing uh, some initial schematic drawing, just laying out areas, and then you want to quickly convert those objects into plants. You can just use this mass creation mode uh, to, to convert those, those areas into plants. One thing to mention, if you are using the hedge mode in conjunction with this, this is going to be more typically used on either open polys or arcs than it would be on closed shapes like a rectangle. So you might not want to use the hedge mode on this unless it's a larger shape. You can, definitely, you can definitely use it, you just might get some overlapping plants. Now the last thing we have to talk about, about the uh, plant tool modes and settings, and the last option we see here in the uh, toolbar, is the plant tool preferences. And this is indicated by the uh, wrench and pencil icon. Uh, this is the universal icon in Vectorworks for preferences. So when we click on this, we're going to bring up the placement options for the plant tool. We're going to go ahead and discuss all these various placement options in a later chapter when we go into uh, plant instance settings uh, specifically. So this about wraps up the uh, placement options for plants. Uh, using these various modes, you can place multiple different plants uh, in different styles and different techniques and quickly create a planting bed like you see here.